Yeah, I said it. This video is brought to you by The Officer Tatum Store, The Officer Tatum Store. Get the merch link in the description section. Make sure you like, subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so you get notifications anytime I go live and make a video. Make sure you still subscribe to my channel, comment on this video, like this video, share this video. Let's get into this. Yes, I said it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm one of the only people that will keep it 100. And that's not afraid what people are going to think. Because it's invaluable that individuals like me who are former police officers will stand up for something. Because most police officers don't have a voice. They can't say the stuff that I say. And they know that what I'm saying is true, but they'll get fired, demonized, racist, whatever you call it. But I'm going to keep it real with y'all. I believe, and I'm going to tell you why I believe it during the duration of this video, but I believe police officers are probably the, the least racist people in society. Of course, you got some cops on the police department that are racist. Of course. And you got racist white ones, you got ones who are black, and you got ones who are Hispanic. You got people of all nationalities that are racist or prejudiced on the police department. It happens. Now, how many of those officers are on the police department is probably the minimal to none on some police officers, police departments. I'll tell you why I believe that. Let me throw some statistics in here real quick so we can get a better understanding because a lot of people are falling through the cracks with statistics that are displayed out of context. Yes, it is true that police officers are patrolling African-American communities at a disproportionate rate. Yes, it is true that black people get arrested at a disproportionate rate. Yes, it is true that in disproportionality, black people are, are, are having force used against them and they're getting into deadly conflicts with police officers. But here are the contextual stats that you need to know so you don't get brainwashed. African-American people in this country commit a, a, a disproportionate amount of crime. You're talking about 13% of the population, only about, I don't know, we could, I don't even want to say half. Just, just for the sake of argument, half of the population is the criminal element. And that's way too high. But for the sake of argument, let's just say, I don't know, let's just say 6 7% of the population is the criminal element in the black community. So 6 or 7% of the population of the United States of America, which is the black criminal element, commits half of the murders in this country, over half of all violent crimes in this country are perpetuated by only 6% of the population in our country. Disproportionate amount of crimes being committed. And that's only convictions. We're not even talking about stuff you don't get caught from doing. Because in Chicago, Illinois, over 80% of the violent crimes or shooting stuff never get solved. That's a whole criminal uh, uh, element that don't even get counted. So you, you can add even more of a number if some of these homicides due to gang violence and inner city violence is even counted because people are getting convicted. Now you have the number uh, even higher than that. So yeah, of course, that's why they get patrolled disproportionately. Another thing is people don't realize that white people get killed twice as much as black people, twice as much uh, unarmed. And people say, well, it's because of the population number. Well, that's not true because cops don't patrol everybody in the United States of America. They only patrol the criminal element. So if you have a disproportionate group, which is the black group, committing all the crimes, white people aren't committing the same disproportionate amount of crimes, but yet they're getting shot more than black people. All you got to do is do the math. They patrol black people at a much higher rate, but they kill white people twice as much. This is not the narrative that people want to display or to tell you about. But it's the myth that is projected in saying that white police officers are racist or is some type of um, systemic racism on the police department. Statistics are showing that it's just not true. I was a spokesperson for the Tucson Police Department. I was, I was on a SWAT team. I was a field training officer, meaning I trained all the new officers or at least the new officers that came to my division. I trained them how to become officers. I was a general instructor. I spoke at the academy and I taught all of the newcomers things at the academy. I've been in every aspect of it, of the police department. I think I even mentioned I was a spokesperson. I may have said that already, but I was a spokesperson. That means I knew all public records. I knew about internal affairs. I knew what, what police officers were getting fired. I knew which ones were getting hired. I've worked in plenty of divisions with detectives, all of that. Never came across a racist cop. Never. Now, if he's racist on the inside and never portrayed or never projected it, then, I mean, I, I don't know what to say. But never came across a racist police officer. And there is a clear reason why. Because, first of all, nobody likes racist people. Nobody. And then, in policing, racism is not effective to do anything. If you are sitting there wasting your time 
pulling over black people just because of the color of their skin, which in many cases, pulling somebody over on traffic, you don't even know what race they are. All you got to do is drive down the street in your car today during the daytime and you pull up behind somebody and tell me what race they are from behind them. You will never know in 99% of the cases. Try for yourself. Anyway, it's not going to benefit you by just pulling over black people, especially black people who don't have drugs who are not committing crimes. You're not gonna get any recognition. Your reputation is not gonna build. You're not gonna make any valid arrests that, that will get you a resume built that you can work on special specialty units. Most police officers come on the department, they want to get a reputation, they wanna go into special units. We all know, unlike the fake woke liberals, we all know that everybody sells drugs. They just, you pick your poison. Everybody's selling drugs. White people sell drugs, black people sell drugs, Hispanic people sell drugs, Asian people sell drugs. And for you to just identify a race, you're missing all these drugs out here. And you know what the, the funny thing is, is that other officers who have common sense, just say that you're a racist, they have common sense. They have now got meth, they got heroin, they got crack, they got fentanyl, they, they got pills, they got, they got all these arrests. Because they going, they ain't looking at the race. They're, they're looking at behaviors. They're looking at trends. And so they winning and you over here losing trying to be racist. That's one reason why police are not or at least likely to be racist. Now let's talk about the white police officer in the black community. Because I think that type of police officer is the least racist of the least racist. Think about this for a minute. See, some of y'all watch TV and you just imagine what cops do on a day-to-day -day basis, but you have no idea what's going on. Cops who are white that work in black communities, they get two things, two, two types of exposures that I think are invaluable to the argument that I'm making. One is they have access and experience and exposure to all kinds of black people. The, in, in these communities, everybody's not a criminal. Everybody's not Ray Ray running around with a shotgun and you know, with a, with, a, with a stolen handgun in his pocket, selling crack on a corner. That's not, that's not the totality of the community. That's a small portion of the community that terrorizes everybody else. But as a police officer in these communities, you get to talk to grandma who's been victimized. You get to talk to young kids who have been victimized. You get to talk to mom that had to put her child in a casket because of gun violence. You have exposure to all types of people. People who are making money. People who are wealthy. Uh, 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 people who are upstanding citizens, some black people who want to be police officers, who aspire to be in the military, who love this country. You get the plethora or, or, or a wide range of exposure and then you get the bad apples. But you are putting your life on the line for everybody in the community. All of these black people, you are willing to lose your life, lose your future for black folks. And you telling me that the, the, these racist white people out here running rampant willing to put their own life on the line for black people. And a lot of these black people aren't willing to put their own life on the line for their own citizens, but I mean, for their own community, least racist people. And I think you build up a tolerance for violence that people who are not patrolling in these black communities do not build up because you see it on a day-to-day -day basis. You have exposure and you have uh, investigations that you do into this criminal activity. So you are not shocked. You are not somehow blindsided. You have learned how to cope with policing in a balanced way in these communities. And for the people out here saying that, oh, police officers are targeting black people. Well, you got to think of it like this. Police officers are not assigned to uh, one generic precinct. They are assigned to precincts in different parts of the city. So it's not like a person on the north side is in the north side and they just run down to the black community on the south side and start uh, doing damage in the community. No. It's people in a particular precinct that already work in these minority communities. They do everything in a minority community. So this is, this is not some random selection of just them attacking black people. They equally disperse cops in certain divisions in order to accomplish coverage of the entire city. So if you work on the North or just say the North is all white, you're only going to be dealing with white folks. Unless black people drive up through the North Division and you and they somehow in your division and you have to make contact with them. So if you're working in a division, mostly white officers in your division and it's mostly a black community, who else do you think they're going to stop? Who else do you think they're going to arrest? Who else? They only got one choice and that's the people that live in that community. Least.
racist people or those individuals working in, 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 that, in that particular division. And I'll say this. Let me add. Being a police officer isn't easy. You, you, you have to be a special person to even sign up for the police department. Even the, even the lowest of the low on the police department are like average to decent human beings in, in, in regular standards. And, and that's my, just my personal opinion. I knew officers who were rude, who had poor attitudes. I wouldn't even want to invite them over my house to eat dinner with them. But I had witnessed them save, I don't know, 10, 15 people's lives. I have witnessed them put their life on the line for other people, some of which some of them have gotten shot to protect the crackhead, to protect the single mom. And, I, you know, so even the ones down here, they have a terrible reputation on the police department to us and that are rude to some citizens, which I believe is wrong. Even they have saved more lives than the average person in America. Even they have, have contributed to the success of more people than a lot of people in America. And I'm just keeping it 100. And I don't condone police officers not having great attitudes. Uh, but I know that people are human. And it's not in the serve and protect uh, uh, oath that you have to be sweet and kind and touchy-feely to people. That's just, that's just not the way it works. So I thought I'd make this video because I think there's a lot of misconceptions out there. There's a lot of perspective that needs to be had. Um, no matter what race you are, if you are a police officer, um, you, you are going through a lot. You are putting it all on the line. You are willing to sacrifice it all. And you have, you have seen stuff that nobody else has been able to see. And nobody else wants to see. They probably couldn't even survive after seeing some of the stuff. Being in situations that most people can't uh, survive in. And another thing I want people to understand too is the camaraderie between police officers, at least on my department and others, a few other departments that I know of, is that there's not racism going on within the department. You know, you got these SJWs who want to think everything is racist. Um... But there's not racism going on in the department. It's like a football team. It's like the military. We all on the same team. We all put on the badge the same way. We all would do anything for one another. My white, my white uh, uh, partners on the police department would take a bullet for me just as fast as anybody else. And I'm going to give you this one story real quick, real quick. I should have did this at the beginning. And this is one example why. I think people, if they saw these things and they, they knew about policing, they'll have a different perspective. But one of my good friends, and we, we, we're really close friends now because of what he did. I went to a call for service and there was a guy who had a swastika on his, on his forehead and he was a white nationalist or something. And he didn't want a black person to take his call for service. Now, of course, we don't get to choose who we go to and they don't get to choose who come. They get who, who show up. So I get there. He's on the phone saying, I don't want a black man taking a police report from me. I only want the white guy to take it. This officer ripped his, you know what? I mean, he got on him. He said, you better not ever say something like that to me. We'll leave. We won't serve you. We won't. I mean, he was ripping him. Boom, boom, boom. And I'm looking at him like, dang, you got my back, got my back. You know what I'm saying? He like, man, F you. You don't say nothing like that about my about my partner right here. You know what I'm saying? So he, he went ham. And, and from that point on, man, I respected him a lot, man, because some people are too afraid to get into that battle on duty. But he went hard for me. He went hard for me. And ever since he was a young officer. And ever since then, man, we were chopping it up. And I guarantee you that this happens on police departments all over the country. There's a, there's a multiple races on the police department. And we're all one team, one family, willing to die for one another. Even when we bicker and disagree, we're still willing to go that extra mile. I hope this gave some insight to people thinking about policing in America, thinking about racist cops in America. It's just, it's just not the case. So like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Visit the Officer Tatum store where you get all the cool merch. Y'all know what it is. I'll see you on the next one.